Hey, DLM family, what does the Bible mean when it says that the dead knows nothing? What does that mean exactly? Because won't we go to Christ if we die? Well, let me go to the Bible directly. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. So here you get those words, but I'm going to continue to read a little bit because you need to read this in its context to understand it, and I'm going to explain it later. But the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and forever they have no more share in all that is done under the sun. So here you have this verse that says the dead knows nothing. So this verse, is it not in contrast with other verses like Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7? It says, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. So here it clearly says that your physical body returns to the ground, to the dust where it came from in the first place, but your soul, your spirit goes to God. And then Jesus says in John 5 verse 24, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. So this verse says the moment you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you already receive eternal life. Meaning when you die, you won't cease to exist. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8 says, Yes, we are of good courage. And we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So, away from the body means that you are with Christ, right? Immediately. Your body goes to the ground, returns to dust where it came from, right? But you are directly going to Christ. That's what the Bible says. It's very clear. It's not like what some Catholics say that you go to purgatory first. Or like uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses that says you enter a soul sleep state. No, the Bible is very clear on this. And then you get this part where Jesus says something very interesting to the person next to him on the cross as well. Listen to this. Luke 23 verse 42. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Not today you'll be in purgatory. Not today you will go into soul sleep. Today you will be with me in paradise. Now let's go back to Ecclesiastes 9. Verse 5. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. So what does this mean exactly? Because we've already established that when you die, you will either go directly to Christ or into eternal punishment. That's clear. You won't go to purgatory or soul sleep or any other weird place. Jesus says in the Bible, And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now, if you have a problem with this truth, then don't quarrel with me. Take it to Jesus. He's the one that said this. So you have only these two types of person. One who will go to Christ, who chose the light. One who will go to eternal punishment, those who chose the darkness, evil. And wherever you go, you'll still be you. You'll have emotions. You'll be able to think for yourself for all eternity. So there's only these two types of people. And the story of Lazarus and the rich man shows us this as an example. Luke 16 verse 22 says, The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. Then it continues and it shows us that they are still who they are. They have emotions, they can think for themselves and they have a conversation. For example, verse 24 says, And he cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. 
Solomon was the guy who wrote Ecclesiastes, right? I've only read to you chapter 9, verse 5. But to understand this, this saying of the dead knows nothing, you need to read the whole book and the whole chapter. Because it wasn't written in chapters and in verses. It was written as a letter, as one. So just before this, in chapter 4, verse 2, he writes this. And I thought that dead who are already dead, more fortunate than the living who are still alive. So how can they be happy if they are dead? Because dead people cannot be happy because they're dead. So this means they must be happy somewhere else. They're not on earth anymore. So they can't be happy on earth. They can't experience those things. So they must be happy somewhere else with God. Do you understand what I'm saying? The whole book of Ecclesiastes was written in a book form from a perspective of people on the earth. So an earthly perspective of things. That's why it always says under the sun, under the sun throughout the whole book. It has an earthly temporary perspective. Look at how it starts. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 1. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. What does man gain by all the toil at which he toils under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and it goes around to the north. Around and around goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, there they flow again. All things are full of weariness. A man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be. And what has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. And then it just goes on and on like this. Solomon wrote this to show us this perspective, the earthly perspective that everything under the sun stays the same. There's nothing new. The dead know nothing. But we, we are still alive trying to make a living. So you have this one view of everybody who's alive and then everybody who is already dead. These people who are dead, they don't contribute anymore to everything that's going on in the earthly world. They're not helping society, working and building relationships with other people. They're not taking care of the natural environment. They do nothing because they're not here anymore. They are dead. Now, let's read chapter 9, verse 5 in its context. Verse 1. But all this I lay to heart, examining it all. How the righteous and the wise and their deeds are in the hand of God. Whether it is love or hate, man does not know. Both are before him. It is the same for all, since the same event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and the evil, to the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice. As the good one is, so is the sinner. And he who swears is as he who shuns an oath. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that the same event happens to all. Also, the hearts of all the children of man are full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live, and after that they go to the dead. But he who is joined with all the living has hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. And they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and forever they have no more share in all that is done under the sun. In other words, they're not here anymore. All of it, their earthly life is gone. Who they fought against, who they loved, who they didn't love. Every single thing is gone. He's basically saying that death comes for everyone. And everyone has the same experience, generation after generation after generation. But then he turns and it starts to be beautiful because he says, you have to make the most of your life. Verse 7 says, Go, eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart. 
for God has already approved what you do. Let your garments be always white. Let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life that He has given you under the sun. Because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. Again, I saw that under the sun the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to those with knowledge. But time and chance happen to them all, for man does not know his time, like fish that are taken in an evil net, and like birds that are caught in a snare. And then it continues on and on like that. He's basically reminding us that death comes for all of us and that you should make the most of your time while you still are in this temporary world because it is going to pass away like that. He's basically saying you should use your time to focus on the things that actually matter. Let me bring this home. When you lay on your deathbed knowing you are about to die and you look back on your life, what will go through your mind. I can guarantee you, it probably won't be, I should have worked more. I wish I made more money or I should have watched more TV series and played more games. What you probably will think about is this, am I really saved? Will I go to heaven? Did I spend enough time with my family? What will people say about me when I die? Did I teach my kids well enough to have a relationship with God? And will they be okay without me? You see, the fact is, a lot of people don't even get that chance to know that they are dying. A lot of people just die instantly. Both of my brothers died in their early 20s. I thought my dad would probably live to be 80 years old. He died in his early 60s. The fact is that you will die and that you can die anytime now, even today. A new study reveals on worldpopulationreview.com that in 2023, there are 332,000 people who die every day. That's 13,860 per hour. That is three to four people every second. Just in the time that you watch this video, a few thousand people already died. One of these days, you'll be one of them. Time goes fast. Don't waste your time. Please listen to me today. Sit down, stop your rat race and think, am I saved? Am I truly a reborn Christian? Don't just think about it in your head theologically. Think about it real. Let it sink in. Ask yourself truly and be brutally honest. Are you a real reborn Christian? Or do you just say it with your words? But your actions, your heart, show something different. What will God say to you one day? I'm saying this to you because I love you. Because God gave me a chance. He took two of my brothers. The second one, when he died, I knew I was not ready. But he took my brother. If he took me, I would have gone to hell. For all eternity, the Bible says clearly, eternal punishment. Jesus himself talks about hell more than heaven. It is a reality. And I'm saying this not to sound, oh, brimstone, hell preacher. No, because I love you. I care about you. And that's why Jesus said it as well, because He cares, because He loves. So if you want to make sure that you are saved, then please watch this video here and I'll see you there. And remember, God loves you and I love you too.